Welcome back to the final video in the multi-video series on willpower. Thanks so much for being here with me through this. I want to spend this last few minutes with you talking about how you can maximize or even increase your willpower. So there's actually four ways to increase your willpower. So if you're going to pay for something large, if you pay in advance, you're probably more committed to it because it's that loss aversion. We've already paid for it. You're already at a loss or at a deficit. So you want to have that come back to you as opposed to, Hey, I didn't pay for it yet. So I'm not really committed. You see what happens there? So if you want to do something major, take on something big, pay in advance, and that will help you to be more committed to that goal. The second tip is to have a social contract. So maybe put it out there to some friends or some people in your life so that they know what you're up to. Just declare it, claim it, say, this is what I'm doing and put it out there socially. Then in the back of your brain, if you wind up not wanting to do something that day, you might go, oh man, well, I said I was going to do it and I am a person of my word. I'm standing in my integrity and I'm going to move forward with it. So that can help you to have a little bit more willpower in that moment. Next idea is to have a coach, life coach, business coach, friendly coach, whatever you want to call it, whoever you need for where you need some assistance in your willpower development, get a coach. They will be there to help you overcome obstacles, maybe see some resourcefulness or resources that you didn't see as a possibility before. They can help encourage you and help with some insight that just wasn't in your perspective at all. And then finally, accountability. So having somebody be an accountability partner, and it really shouldn't be your spouse or your best friend. They're going to let you off the hook if you say, oh my gosh, I was having this really hard day. You need somebody who's going to show a little bit of tough love, right? They want the best for you. You're saying that you want this. Have them hold you accountable and be okay with how they speak with you about keeping you accountable. So maybe set those terms in advance. If you are um, really sensitive, you don't want somebody yelling at you or telling you that you made the biggest mistake because you didn't do that. Not a way to help encourage. So have a conversation with those accountability partners. Tell them what motivates you. Tell them what helps keep you going. Tell them how you need to be spoken to so that you'll receive their accountability teachings as opposed to shaming you or making you wrong because you hear them a certain way. I know sometimes I can be a little bit sensitive. So if my accountability partner were to say, Christy, you said that you were going to do this. Now I'm just going to be making myself wrong because I didn't do it. I didn't go through with it. I'm a person of my word. You get it. So what will it take to help you move forward towards your goal, keep you in line, keep you motivated and keep you accountable. Okay. So what else could help in building willpower? Use your imagination. If you're having a very difficult moment, a very stressful situation, and you have to make a big decision, but you're in a heightened state of stress, sometimes just that deep calming breathing that I was talking about before isn't always enough. Sometimes we have to close our eyes and bring in good old fashioned imagination. So where is your happy space? My happy space is sitting on the beach, someplace like Jamaica, Aruba. I've got a warm wind in my face. I've got the sunshine on my back. I can hear the waves. I can hear birds that I don't typically hear in my own backyard. It's just beautiful. I can smell the salty sea air. That is a stress reliever. So use imagination. Maybe imagination is just a forward thinking of seeing yourself in that situation. So if your goal is to lose 50 pounds, see yourself slim and trim and healthy and 50 pounds smaller in the clothes that you desire to wear. If it's making more money or finishing school, see yourself on the other side of those goals. See yourself out of school and in the career choice that you've been working so hard towards or in that promotion or in that um, income space that you're striving to get towards. See yourself in it, feel yourself in it, and that can help you with that willpower to keep motivated and focused on your long-term goals and find a way to laugh. Laughing raises your cortisol levels and that helps when it comes time for big decisions. And build good habits one habit at a time. I see that's where I have failed in my past is I'll try to change three and four things all at one time. Focus on one good habit implementation 
at a time and have a reward system. So if you just went and spent 30 minutes on the stepper or an hour working out, or you know you wrote your book for 30 minutes or whatever your goal is that you're trying to accomplish, make sure that there's a reward at the end because if you don't reward yourself, it's just hard work. So we need to be able to gift ourselves, reward ourselves and pleasure ourselves for that hard work that we put towards and sticking towards that goal where willpower had to show up. And plan ahead of time, plan for your food, plan for your alcohol, plan for your spending, whatever it is that you're focused at that moment for that good habit implementation, have a plan of attack in advance. So if this is gonna happen, then this is what I'm going to do. Because when you go to face it, it's less willpower that you're um, counting on to show up. You've already got a plan and a decision made, and so you don't have to expend all of your willpower on this one decision because you've pre-planned for it. And then once those good habits are created, it's routine. You no longer have to draw on willpower in order for those decisions to be made. They just kind of fall into place once it's a habit. And last that I'd like to share with you is sometimes it's not a lack of willpower. Sometimes it's this goal is so massive and large, the enormity of it can keep you stuck. You don't know where to start. So chunk it out into small little pieces. If you have a goal to lose 50, maybe start off with five and then 10 and then build from there. When you're able to chunk it out, it does help to remove that willpower depletion. You're not gonna feel so exhausted from making all of those decisions. And you'll be able to celebrate those little successes all along the way. You've got this, I'm so happy for you. And thank you for being part of this series. I hope you had some really amazing takeaways. If you don't mind, put in the comments, what is your favorite takeaway from this entire series? That one thing that knowing it now moving forward will have a long lasting impact, a positive impact in your life. Thanks so much for being here with me. And until next time, my friends, stay well.